Hey y'all, welcome to Down the Rabbit Hole. Today we have my guest, Miss Dolly, M- Mistress Dolly. Mistress Dolly. Make sure yes. I say that correctly. Yes. Mistress Dolly. <laughs> How are you doing today, Mistress Dolly? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. So you came into town for Avian? Yes. How's it been going so far? It's been very busy so far. Yeah, I literally came here from doing a collab, and now I'm here interviewing, I know. and then I'm going to do some more things after this, so it's busy, the busy. The fuckery is, is incredible. It's like, The debauchery is going to be lit it's, this yeah, whole weekend. It's already been week. lit. Yeah. <laughs> we had our pre-avian party last night. I hosted it with Ebony Mystique. I don't know if you yes, know Ebony. Yeah. I was supposed to go, but then I ended up... You, she me. ended up in a penthouse, so she yeah. just, you know, <laughs> excuse us. <laughs> um, so for the people who don't know who Miss Tristali is, please let us know who you are and what you do in life how people would know who you are yeah okay well i'm a femdom in real life so um i started off as a femdom and i do like sessions and stuff like kink exploration fetish exploration and i have like a whole little bitch army and stuff that worships me and pays for my existence in life so that was how i started out and then i started in doing like content creating porn stuff um I've been creating, like, amateur content for a lot of years, but this year was, like, official, like, production porn type of content, and, like, I did really great coming out this year, so I'm like, we're going to keep doing that. So right now it's just domination, porn, and that's pretty much it right now yeah all the little wimpy boys know who you are oh yeah they're already they're probably all on their knees right now waiting for this <laughs> waiting for this interview to they're drop like, when's it gonna drop i yeah. love it <laughs> so how did you i mean we like to dig we like to dig deep right yeah so how did you like it started in the dom industry like was that a transition thing or was it just like uh, it new? was definitely not a transition thing i watched porn a long time ago i'm pretty sure we all know what it's kink.com like they have all of that the little like, what is it, the castle that shows up? Yeah. I saw something when I was, like, underage. Obviously, bad girl. Shouldn't be watching porn. But I saw, like, a whole femme dom scene, and I was like, I want to be that girl in the shiny suit stomping on dicks. Like, that's who I'm going to be. You and just knew. I knew. I'm her. <laughs> I manifested How old that. are you when you saw that? I was literally 16 years old. Oh, you're 16. So you I was, that, you were I like was that, that young. Yeah, I wasn't that young. I was underage, and then I literally was like wanting to be a suicide girl my whole life. I don't remember. I don't know if anybody remembers suicide girls. Yeah, but that, I do. Yeah, yeah, that was like the whole alternative modeling thing. I jumped right into that white run and turned 18, and then I was like, oh, yeah, we're not doing that. So, yeah, we had to give that a little break. You had to? <laughs> so what was... When you did the amateur ver- porn versus the production porn, yeah, what was like the major differences that you seen or like that you liked or? Well, you know? amateur for me, I feel like it was more like self shot stuff for me, so it wasn't like super professional looking and like lighting was off and all that. Clearly, we all have to like learn some things and yeah. figure all Angles. that out and so yeah, to make it how look to not good. Get a ball hole, but just get the yeah, balls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I pretty much started. Oh, my brain stopped working. See, this is why you don't smoke weed. We both were super stoned. Well, 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 what did it. you just ask me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no <you> fucking clue. <laughs> Somebody needs to tell us what we're talking about right now. <laughs> no. I asked you um, the difference between doing the amateur porn, amateur and production. And like, yeah, there's like actual people recording me now and like yeah. following me around. And like, there's a fucking whole ass like camera all up in my face, coochie all up in there. Like, yeah, and there's like. They get more point of view stuff versus like here, you're on a tripod right now with like a light ring light and you're just gonna get one angle. Yeah. All the angles, all the goodness, and like it's just better it's to just me. like you yeah. liked it, you preferred it? Yeah. I like production better. Um obviously you can create content any day yourself and do amateur stuff, but like the whole production stuff was pretty cool and then I like getting paid too. That's nice. Like I amateur you don't really get paid much, but like production stuff you get more yeah. offers and stuff and I like to make money, so I, like, I fucking hear that. <laughs> and hit that around with making money. Yeah. So before you got into this, before you saw like your first porn when you were 16, right? Mm-hmm. Did you ever like just kind of already knew that you were just a bossy bitch already? Like was it already your personality or did, was, do you feel like that was just like, <gasps> yeah. I, I awakening, I guess? No, it wasn't. It definitely was an awakening. I've always been very loud and like that bitch all the time. And I feel like I just grew up and I was like, oh, I was just meant to be this little, with it. I was like, I was supposed to be a goddess my whole life. And here I am. I just grew up into it. So where are you from? Um, I'm actually from San Diego, California. <gasps> Shut the fuck up. Girl, yes. Do you know that I'm from San Diego? You told me that once. Yeah. Don't, you said you We met a few times. Like yeah, a couple yeah, concert yeah. parties and stuff. Yeah. 
wait a minute now. I was like born and raised in San Diego. Where in San Diego did you grow up in? Um, I was born in North County, so like oh, the boring okay. part. So That's I, totally why we didn't know each other. You're like, yeah, I was like Escondido, Carlsbad, oh, okay. like San Marcos area. My brother's wife is from that area, though, so you guys okay. might know each other from up there because she was yeah. in, like valley center escondido kind of that's exactly where i was born like was in escondido oh, yeah. and, like i lived right by the grade before you went into valley center i was like uh, yeah so i have to are. drive through that every time yeah. i come back to vegas so <laughs> i feel it no that's dope i didn't know you were a dago yeah, girl San Diego that's girl. why we so okay. fly okay yeah, that's right? why we knew yes we knew. yes <laughs> so you're you started into the dom thing right how did mm-hmm. like what was your first like major experience like when did you go like Okay, now I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay. Well, um, it was actually a freaking Tinder date. I'm not even kidding you. Like, the whole Tinder thing happened. I met up with this guy, and he told me that he wanted me to do some crazy shit to him. And me being like, oh, hell yeah, that was, like, kind of stuff I watched. My first experience was literally fisting a man, and that was, like, crazy for me. Like, you would think I'd start off light, like, oh, foot worship or something very simple. No, I was straight up, like, fisting people off the bat, and that was crazy for me. <laughs> I love oh, that. my God. And it was so crazy because that was the – first off, he didn't clean his asshole out good enough. So, first, that was disgusting. Ew. Shit on hand. And then when I re-gloved, I lost a glove in his butt, and I had to re-glove to dig it out. So, it was, like, a very crazy experience <laughs> for me, and that was – my first dom experience like actually doing it in real life and you I was lost like, oh my the, God. so you lost the glove in the asshole in the ass and i had to like take my hand out be disgusted wash my hand re-glove Ugh. up and then re-grab it out of his asshole See? I, like, I told you guys that story last week when we did <laughs> or a couple weeks ago we did the with what tokyo was it or paris we're talking about the guy at the bunny ranch out of fucking finger his asshole and i was like oh my god the whole time. <laughs> it's really not for the weak stomach because at first I almost threw up like on yeah. it. Well, especially when my hand came out and I saw the shit. I was like, we're going <gasps> to go set my hand on fire. And I'm like, I freaked out. I had to take like two showers. Like we're going <laughs> to chill for one second. <laughs> I was like, this is horrible. Yeah, that was, it was an experience for sure. And that it was like a traumatizing yet very educational experience. Like, She's like okay, well, we're not going to do that again. Yeah, well, we're not going to wear gloves that are fucking wrist length. We're going to use like the ones that you like uh, artificially like assimilate animals with. Like that's the stuff that we should be using like up to the elbows. Don't use the fucking ones here because you're going to lose the glove. I need the ones that I shove up the cow's ass. That's exactly the ones that I need. Those little plastic ones. That yeah. They're not even real gloves. They're just fucking plastic Yeah, they're the Dexter gloves. Yes. Yeah, the Dexters <laughs> going in to do the dirty work. Seriously, I'm just going to walk in like this. And then you have to walk out like that too because you don't know what the fuck's on your arms What is the that. most, that, what's like the biggest thing that you've gotten up somebody's ass? Ooh, okay. So it would be a watermelon. Shut the fucking front door. <laughs> and How does someone ask to get that big? Well, it was a mini watermelon. Okay, so that's still I, pretty big. Yeah, I was like, it was not like the full blown big guys. Like you know how they have the little mini melons. Yeah, yeah. it was a mini one, and I could double fit. I could foot this guy. So like literally, he's got a very large, stretched out asshole. So I made him put it in there, and I made him literally flex his fucking prostate to crack it and juice the juice into a cup, and I made him drink it. <laughs> it was like the funniest thing ever. So yeah, that was a. It was the where do you get where do you come up with this shit? When you're just like getting there, you're just like, yeah, I'm gonna make you crack this in there and drink it. Like, where does it? Honestly, a lot of the people that I work they ask with, for it? they some of them ask for it, or some of them will give me like ideas of like what they're into. Because I don't just like go into sessions or anything like blindly. I vet my client, like my people that I work with, and I ask them like, hey, what do you want to do? Like. What is your ideal session? What are your fetishes, kinks? Like, I have to know everything they like before I go in there. Because, yeah. God forbid, I literally go in it and, like, some guy just likes to get pegged and he's not really a, a submissive like that. And I'm like, get out here. Call to me. Let me fuck you in the ass. Like, some, that'll really ruin shit for people because that's yeah. happened before. You have to properly vet people and ask what yeah. they like. Because if you got, get started and you're, like, literally fucking wrecking their soul and they didn't want their souls wrecked like that yeah like, some yeah. guys are just like the hum- uh the humiliation of it too. yeah that's like it sounds yeah and i don't work with anybody that's like you could do whatever you want mish just i'm like oh no 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 that's too much work for me i was like you got to tell me something we're not going to just do what i want because if i want to do something i'll just sit in a corner and watch you do nothing and you're still going to pay me and then you're going to leave that's what you're going to do so <laughs> yeah i was like don't I ask me what i want to do because yeah. <laughs> that's what i want to do nothing I want to do sit right here. And I want to do nothing. Give me money anyway. And yes. Yeah. Give me your money and just leave. Thank you. That's funny. <laughs> have, have you, do you ever get anything that still just like completely blows your mind? You're just like, whoa. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, I had to never do this session again. I experienced, <laughs> experimented with diaper play. Don't do that. 
I, yeah. yeah, it's weird. I like, did my first one was like that, and it turned me off to most fetishes. Yeah, well, peeing it is one thing, but the shit part of it, like I went to the, I did the whole shit part. I made this guy enema himself, and like, I, it was a whole cute setup. So we were in his little theater in his house, <laughs> and setup. he was he was dressed up like a cute little sissy in a cute little lingerie outfit for me. I made him put a diaper on and the thong over it. Before that, I had to put an enema up his ass, so I made him hold the enema while I got him dressed, put the diaper on. I used him as a foot so while I was eating, and then I made him shit into the diaper. That was a mistake. The shit part and eating was a mistake. <laughs> he bought, like, a five-course beautiful, like, $150 meal for me to, like, eat in the theater while he was my footstool, and then he shat in the diaper, and I was like, we're up. I, so you did this in public? Did you make him... Not in public. This oh. was at his house. Okay. Yeah, I do a lot of private stuff, but yeah. I do do public stuff. Like, yeah. my public stuff is pretty cool, too, but I try my best not to do a lot of that because I just, like, I feel like I believe in third-party consent a lot. Yeah, and it's, you too. It's there, like... And there's sometimes there's, like, a, there, I'm big with the kids, man. The kids. I'm a mom, so, like, yeah, yeah I'm, like, kids, mm, man. yeah, none of that. Like, I don't want to walk outside. Like, I don't. you shouldn't subject people to your... If that's what you like, cool, but yeah. he, I'm just big on, like, being respectful to, like, somebody else might not like that, though. Absolutely, yeah. and, like... For when I do public humiliation, it's literally in outdoor spaces where I know there's not going to be fucking anybody. So we'll go to like the woods where like nobody's just going to be walking around the woods here or like an empty parking lot like at a building downtown because or go on the top floor or like like somebody could see you. Yeah, like like, you think, yeah, like maybe they'll show up, but they're really not like that's the kind of public humiliation. Or I do stuff like discreet public humiliation where like I'll have them take me to dinner and like I'm literally like I'll have them in a diaper or I'll have them wear like women's lingerie under and I'll make them like walk and kind of like have their butt cracks hanging out with their little thong hanging oh, out with yeah, their make them, like show it. Yeah. yeah. So I do stuff like that or I'll like spit. It's like more discreet. Well, spitting in drinks is pretty discreet. Like I'll just get their drink and then I'll like sit there, pretend I'm drinking it and spit it all out and I'll make them drink the whole thing at dinner or like mama birding. I stuff. can't even <laughs> think of like the mean things to do to people and it's so funny because I get people asking me all the time especially with my body structure yeah they're always like you don't do dom and I'm like I just don't know what to like I don't what do you want me to do I don't know like I'm too nice I get really creative sometimes I don't even know half the time like what I'm gonna do I'm just like hmm, what should I do and I'm like okay we're gonna spit now and then we're gonna go in the bathroom we're gonna also like do a little tinkle in a little cup and like pour a little bit in there I've done that yeah you pee in their cups too pee in their cups yeah they love it they love that I have a whole funnel that's like a gag like you literally it's like a little strap you strap it around their head and it's a funnel and you piss in it and they have to drink every drop and if they don't then they get punished so what do you do when you punish them it depends on what because they all have like different restrictions but it's it's usually cbt i like to hit people in the balls and like when you do something bad you're gonna get hit in the balls because that's usually all most men's soft spot and like my predominant like slavery and subs they're all men i do work with women as well and like trans and like all all genders i'm all inclusive but mainly all of my little bitch boys are bitch boys they're boys yeah <laughs> yes i love it i just want to say i just want to like listen to all your stories me and Vic are like i love your story <laughs> do you know why and um and not to knock any other guests that come on but it's like it's um it's sometimes i get a little scared to talk about like the experience itself and I'm like tell me the stories that people want to hear the crazy shit so and I love just how like fluid even like the first day I met you you were just like you know always really sweet but I still knew like you know and that's what's an crazy to you. about it. People are like, you're too nice to be a dom. I was like, oh, well, then you clearly have not been dommed by me. No, and <laughs> listen, I knew she wasn't fucking around because I'm the thought a thon <laughs> We're supposed to do a wet t-shirt strip off. <laughs> and she walks up and takes the water bottle and drinks it, spits it in his face, and throws the water <laughs> bottle at him. <laughs> at She's his like, head. And that was my turn. And I was like, <laughs> and I'm yes, done. Yes, it was your turn. <laughs> <laughs> He was so shocked. He really was like, oh, yeah, she's about to twerk on me. Like, give me a laptop. No, baby, you're going to get this water bottle spat in your face. I feel like a Stone Cold Steve Austin moment where I, like, felt like I needed to crack two beers. Like, oh, and then smacked him in the face with the fucking bottle. I was like, and we're done. I hope you enjoyed your (laughs) lap dance. That didn't happen. (laughs) She's like, what, Riley? You're going to make me do a lap dance? I didn't even. Yeah, I was like, what, a lap dance? It was something just like a wet t-shirt. Like, uh, you know, just like be cute. I was like, uh, whatever. Let her Uh, do what she won't. Yeah. I got third place. I got third place, though. At least I placed. She did. She got third place. (laughs) And uh, it was hot. So whatever. And I had to check it. I was like, are you okay? And he was just like, I've already uh, already shot with her. I'm I'm used to this. (laughs) I was like. He's like, I already know what she was gonna do. <laughs> exactly. What you were gonna do. <laughs> oh my god. 
Oh, it was fucking hilarious. Is there a part, is there a fetish that you, well, I'm pretty sure that if you've had one that you've done it, but you seem like somebody who wouldn't hold back. But is there something that you're like, hmm, I'm more curious about this. I haven't really got to do it yet. Hmm. I want to experience like back beds. Like I do a lot of latex play and people like the whole like suffocation. I get really scared with breath play. So I really want to try like the whole. What is breath play? Break that down. Breath play is pretty much just like playing with the breath. Like smothering people, holding their breath. Yeah, like yeah. you're the one controlling their ex- breath. Exficiation, yeah, yeah, like smothering and all that kind of stuff. I even have people that like to like do like the whole like false hanging things like where they want to oh, noose. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, you guys That's are crazy. Or like much. the bags over their heads. Like those are some things that I don't do because I did try the noose thing once and there was a big mistake with that. It did not turn out right. Yeah, there was... That sounds like somebody could have died. No, he could have. I had to administer CPR. Like, I'm lucky that I knew CPR. This fucking oh, idiot. That's good. Yeah, it was... A, it. I will never do that again, but we did the news play thing, and it was, like, on a ladder, and he was, like, stepping down, and he, his stupid ass slipped. He slipped off the ladder. So here I am, like, tiny as fuck in, like, literally 10-inch hills trying to, like, get him down, like, climb up a ladder and help him. It was crazy, and then I had to administer CPR. I was like, we're never doing this again, and then I had to fucking, like get release forms and shit for her stuff. I was like, after yeah. that, I was like, okay, we're going to get, like, release forms. They got to sign all this. Like, anything we do, like, yeah, that was a very scary moment moment for me in my career. Yeah, that would yeah. be scary. Oh, my God, that freaked me out. Yeah, so there's different forms of breath play, and that is one I will never do again. Mm-hmm. We're good on that. But the back bed, I want to do that, but I'm scared of that. What, okay, tell me what that is. It's literally a bed. So good at describing And it's made out of latex. It's like latex sheets, yeah. but the person goes between the sheets and you like suck all the air out. So they're literally sucked into like this fucking piece of like sheet latex and they have no breath or there's like this little tube that comes out of their mouths and you can like hold it to like restrict their breath or you can like blow in it to blow them up. But like it's literally just a whole body in case yeah, in I think I've seen that. It's, out. it's yeah. almost like they fucking. They're literally wrap like, their yeah, they're they like this, them. and then they're like flailing around, and then you, there's like little holes that you can cover for th- that they breathe out of. But like, yeah, that's I, that's a form of breath play that I really wanna, I wanna try. But I don't have one of those back beds that I'm just like, mm, I'm kind of scared. So <laughs> somebody wants to buy her one of the back beds. Yeah, you buy me a back bed. Buy me five. <laughs> 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 them, okay? <laughs> yes, with all the sanitary stuff. I love it. That's <laughs> fucking crazy. I can't even think of some of these fetishes that people are into. People are really and they keep um there's there's a few guys that really get in this like Hulk thing, like this female Hulk big body. And because I'm such a thick woman, they're like they call me like she Hulk and they're like do will you like they want me like smash them and like like you said if they like want Hulk me to, smash like psh- put all my weight on them. There yeah. I have a lot of people that are really into like weight so they're like yeah i want you to literally put all your body on my face and that's where my uh breath play stuff would have came in because yeah i get a lot of ass worship obviously absolutely because your ass is fabulous <laughs> <laughs> and um they just want to fucking suffocate themselves in it so they will like have me just sit on their face until they're like tapping out and yeah I'm they're like, like ah, they're like tapping your yeah, ass to get, so get i kind of have to like pull my butt cheeks up a little bit give them my oh, air and then just dead. and then you just that's the most amount of like a, like dom stuff because i'm too nice so i'm just like are you okay back there after okay. you're done you're like okay you're alive okay can i give you a hug there cookie <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, good job friend <laughs> you did so great <laughs> i was like good job <laughs> i'm fucking crazy i love it oh wait we gotta see you have some toys over there i do have some toys this is like my favorite toy that this I is use. your favorite toy my drill dough i was like this is like no all, all, all of my porn videos or most of them if i'm working with a girl they're most likely going to get the drill though and i i'm pretty sure i've made more girls squirt with my drill dough than like any man in their existence I've really ever made a girl squirt people keep trying to get me to squirt i haven't done it i'm this never... will help you do it this thing's intense yeah this is literally like it's a freaking dewalt drill like not a drill i think it's a uh, dewalt saw with like a dick on the end and like it has different you have to control it with your fingers and it's really hard sometimes like i'll slip and i'll be like oh shit like sorry oh it's like yeah it goes really <laughs> fast and that's the one that makes them squirt it's when you're on full like and it's all the way up it's there that jackhammer it is it's like those ones on the floor i really wanted to go see it. It. P- flick it at me you said flick it at- oh flick yeah, it at you <laughs> oh that's you're like, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a little flick. <laughs> I, love, yes. I love my flicking my bean time. Flicking the beans. I literally tell people that all the time. They're like, what do you do? I'm flicking the bean. I love it. 
What is the other one? Whip, that's a flogger? Yes, this one's actually made out of latex, and this one really hurts. I just got this one, so I was like, we're going to show this one off. I like that. Wait, so this one hurts more than the other one? Oh, yeah, it's heavier, oh, too. Shit. Yeah, it's literally made out of rubber, and it's heavy. So, like, when you hit yourself, it's more of, like, a, a heavy thump versus, like, a light. Because, like, I have different yeah. floggers. I have some, some that are... Some of them, actually, I was, like, they always look like they're going to hurt more than they do. And then... Yeah. I was, like, oh, they weren't really that bad. I thought I was going to get fucked up. It's the ones that are, like, made out of, like, the softer leather. Like, they don't hurt that bad. But, like, yeah. the ones that are made out of stuff like this, and I also have ones made out of chains, those ones hurt really bad. Yeah. Those you, are bad for... Those are meant to... people destroy. with chains? Yeah, I have a chain flogger. Oh my god! Yeah, it's That's blinged crazy. out and it's a chain. I was like, oh. <laughs> I just can't. I wonder, like, so other than like the dom stuff, do you have it? Do you like having anything done back to you? Or are you strictly the dom? Um, I'm strictly the dom. Like, I definitely am like super alpha. I do have a partner. Nobody ever knows about my personal life, but yeah, in my home, I that's the only person I switch for is him. Like, he's daddy. I will okay, never daddy. Hey. Dad. I'm daddy usually, but he's daddy. But yeah, I only switch for one person, and it, I obviously like you have to trust people that you switch for because I fucking hate being a sub. But I'll be a sub for him because I love him. Yeah, <laughs> I feel the same way. I really have the I really have to like trust the person I'm with to get any kind of. Yeah. I don't need to be the dom dom, but like just to be like completely submissive. Like yeah. you said, do what and just do it. Like yeah, nah. exactly. Mm-mm. Nah, actually, yes, I sit down because I'm. And I have an attitude and don't like listening, so it's like really hard for me to be like, "Oh yeah, let's just do whatever you want to do." Like it's never like that, except <laughs> for him. He's allowed to do that. That's it. <laughs> That's funny. You guys been together a while? Uh, yeah, eight years. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we got a whole ass family and all that. Look at us. <laughs> See, there's normal people out here yeah. doing normal stuff too. Well, even though I do the least normal out of all the things, but I I'm normal. It. I'm a mom. I I have a life. <laughs> do you, how many kids do you have? I have my son and then my partner's uh, son, so stepson. So you guys yeah. have two between two you boys, guys? and they're both similar ages, so it's like perfect. Oh, like little that's besties. fun! Yeah, I, I love, love that. It. Love it, love it, love it. How do you? Are you able? Was well? Let me ask you a couple questions. Being a mom in this industry, what is like one of the more challenging things that you find? Well, just keeping, keeping it private. Keeping it private, yeah. Like, my son definitely doesn't know what I do. He thinks I model, which obviously I am a model. I do that, too, but, like, a different form of modeling. He but yeah, like a suicide model. Yeah, yeah. So he, he thinks I model, so that's cute. And I also do own, like, very non-sex work businesses. Like, I have, like, a beauty business and I have a catering business. So I do other things oh. so it looks like I'm not just doing yeah. this. So he knows that I model. I have two businesses. So I keep my stuff, like, really discreet. Like my I'm very busy. Yeah, so, yeah. very busy. So like he does not know like what I do, and I don't want him. When he does find out when he's older, it's gonna be really. I don't even. I'm not prepared for that. You're not ready. I really am not prepared for that. Cause People I re- would be surprised how much they like. Yeah, kind of know. They know who their mamas are. Yeah, they do, yeah. and I'm pretty sure he like isn't surprised because I wash laundry a lot and like my piles of like random laundry and like shiny <laughs> shit. He's like, what? <laughs> What like, is yeah. going on? Why yeah, is my like, mom just like Or why does she have a closet full of stripper <laughs> hills or like hills that are literally like seven to like 12 inches high? Yeah. Like, no, no. I no love it. Is it <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in here? Yeah. I love it. Fuck. So wait, I mean, do you keep those super, super personal? Because you can plug your catering business on here if you want to. Um. Yeah. Well, my catering business is the Spicy Mestiza. Okay. And then I have um, Bodied by Dolly. I do like uh, cavitation. I do laser lipo, like yeah, non-surgical butt lifts, shit, girl, titty lifts, lifts all, that, out here. all of that I love stuff. It. Yeah. Where's your catering company at? Where? Um. Everything's in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Everything's where I live. Yeah. I okay. live in Pittsburgh currently. Yep. I do. I got some fans in Pittsburgh. So if you get in Pittsburgh, check out. Make sure you guys check out yes. our food. Okay. Yes, I'm the tamale plug in that fucking city. I make the best tamales in that bitch, yep. Oh, we gonna need the overnight. Yeah, I'm gonna need the overnight. Yeah. Next, next tits out, take out. We eat. Tamales. I should have brought some. Were you at you? You were at DC Exotica, right? No, I did oh, uh, Jersey, 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 because I brought some there. Uh, <laughs> I brought a lot there. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna be back on the East Coast soon. I'm gonna okay. pull up. I'm I, gonna pull up. I'll make some for you. They take a day, but I'll make them for you for the whole day. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? What? When do you? How long does it take to make them? Um, it's really not that long. Me, because I'm by myself when I make them, it takes longer. But if I had, like, another person, not that long. The reason I was saying, because you know I do a baking show, too. I cook Ooh, and do all stuff. We so should say, do a tamale series. Yeah, if you want to. Because I always just do it. It's kind of like a thong and an apron. And I'm then down. you make some, and you can teach me how to make tamales. And then you'll know how to make fire-ass tamales. Boom! <laughs> okay, now we get more Patreon episodes. Yes. I love it. I love it. Um, okay, so... For pe- let people know where they can find you. Okay, so on Instagram, I am Miss Two Tongues, and it's a Z at the end versus. And an first S. of all, we're not gonna go too far without seeing this. Let them see the tongue. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I have two tongues. That's what it is. And I also have horns. I've got a lot of crazy shit. I've got horn implants. I didn't my, even realize those were You didn't? Yeah. No. I have horn implants. My ears are pointed. I got like a little glow in the dark star uh, implant there. And then I've got this anchor in my hand. And that like, anchor is great. That's yeah. crazy. It's like a whole anchor. It's a whole anchor. Yeah. I got, Wait, I, show the camera. Can, can the camera see it? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoa, that's intense. Yeah. So do you, you, you're into like that, the body pain. modification. Yeah, and yeah. pain. I also hang from hooks too and do oh. sideshow stuff. Like, I'm a crazy bitch. I like pain stuff. Because I'm not a I'm, sub, no, I'm a but pussy. I'm a sub for like pain stuff, like tattoos, piercings. Like I do hang from hooks and like. Like in your, like just straight from your back. My skin. Yeah. My, well, everywhere. If, I don't know if you see my knee. Oh, yeah. You can see all the little scars on my knees. I've yeah. hung from my knees, my calves, my ass, my fucking chest, all everywhere. There's What is it about that that I just. Uh, what's the feeling that you get so for me it's very euphoric because like i sadly i used to be a cutter and it wasn't because like i was wanted to die it was because i liked the feeling of it and that's kind of like how i did like therapy on myself like it made me feel good and then i was like this is kind of not cool to do anymore because it's like it's embarrassing like you don't want to have all these little marks on your asking yeah they ask so like i'm like we're just gonna get covered in tattoos and then it just went from there so when i did suspension it literally it like obviously there's whole ass hooks in your fucking skin so it's a entire experience like getting off the floor is the best part get like like all of the work to get off the floor is the worst fucking part because it hurts it does hurt people like does it hurt like it absolutely is fucking excruciating but like once you get off the floor it feels like you're literally like on drugs like it's so euphoric like like you're on fucking like molly or ecstasy or something yeah you literally feel like you're on top of the world like you literally are hanging from your fucking skin and not ripping so like it's a whole it's a whole thing and I do, like, some That's ritual crazy. stuff, too. Like, I add my little witchcraft stuff in it, and it gets kind of creepy. But, like, it's some fun stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Are you into, like, brewia and stuff? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. That's so, I, I'm not, like, crazy, crazy into it, but there's, like, certain things I, that I find, like, very interesting. And I even have, like, an altar just different religions yeah. or places I've traveled that I keep everything in one place. So Absolutely. I'm really into the energy stuff. So I'm into the energy stuff and I'm actually a satanic witch. And a lot of people get really confused with like what that means. Uh, people think Satanism is like the belief in the devil. The it's devil, really yeah. not like no. the Satanism is the belief in yourself. Like you are God, you create and manifest everything in your life. And like, we even have rules and they're cooler than the fucking 10 commandments. And it's all about being a good human being and like not hurting kids or animals and stuff like yeah. that. So people are like, Oh, you worship the devil's like, no baby, that's not, not what satanism is yeah and then satanism like with witchcraft it's pretty much like fucking science like the stars like the planets astrology like energies like stones and all that kind of stuff so it's not really as scary as like i'm not sacrificing kids or animals at an altar like thanks hollywood you fucked it up for the rest of us like that's not what it is at all yeah (laughs) it was i mean i think i think if people realize that like religion and things over time have made it so that we don't want to believe in ourselves exactly. we have to believe in this higher power thing yeah and you know i grew up like i grew up christian i was mm-hmm. i'm i just Same. i'm agnostic now i just i don't really have like one particular higher power i just mm-hmm. i find energy and things absolutely but um yeah I, they have to tell us that Satanism and Berea and all these things are or not bad. good or yeah. bad because the majority of people they don't want the, like self yeah they don't want you to love yourself like they just want to keep yeah. everybody's vibrations low in this fucking planet and like you're, you're easier man- you're easier to manipulate when you're like in the masses exactly. you know and we keep everyone in a low easy steady like so, so everyone's got fucking ADD and on pills and they're just zoned yeah, out yeah and- man and then it's the media too like scaring people cause like fear is like the lowest vibration and like hate and like mm-hmm. that's what our entire fucking planet is filled with and it's really it's sad. sad yeah and if you literally vibrate it's making like, us sick it is and if you yeah. actively try to be positive in your life like i heard that if there's like 16,000 people collectively that are like radiant at like the highest vibrational level like you can literally change like the fucking entire universe like i didn't know that i was like and it's sad that there's not 16,000 people that are vibrating at that level in at the level at the same world. time yeah, yeah. so it's, there might be like some that are yeah they're all over. they're all over the place but not like at the same time collectively but i'm like oh we gotta figure out we're gonna make a post like hey 16,000 people let's meet up let's yeah some shit. let's change the fucking world <laughs> yeah i think that's kind of too why music festivals are such a big thing why people get so addicted to the music festivals because it's like there's so many people that are just and like this like whatever it is we're doing whether it's drugs sober dr- whatever they're it's just, unity they're all trying to get to this place where they're just like i just want to be happy and free and mm-hmm. that moment whatever it took to get there is like it's kind of i mean 
I it would be nice to get there without any substance, but like I yeah. get it, you know, like no, for sure. And it's cute because those kind of festivals, like there's different type of, of people there. I yeah. remember I was, I was at a rave once and I was literally listening to trans music. I think it was like Tiesto. I don't even like trans music. Yeah, I was like really fucked up. Okay, I used to do the crazy shit, the drug stuff at the raves, but like I saw this cute little cholo and chola couple, and they were like. I was fucked up on the floor, like literally so fucked up I couldn't stand. I like, we started singing this song together and I reached over, grabbed their legs and we all started singing yeah. to each other. I was like, this is life. Like literally, <laughs> I would never probably be your friend yeah. on the streets, but like, this is what it's but about. It's like, like, it don't matter. We're yeah, vibed out exactly. right now. I love shit like that. <laughs> love it, love it. I know. At this, this year, I've, I've figured out how to get to that place a little bit easier too, just, just like chilling out. And like, I had a lot of things in my life that through being in the industry and interviewing people and doing mm-hmm. stuff like that, like, my world is even like opened up and my mind is open. Me- yeah. Like even like through meeting content parties and like yeah, chill and absolutely. talk. I used to be so afraid to do certain things or be like, oh, I don't like this because it makes me feel sometimes. And like when you finally let go and like start experiencing life and humans yeah. in their essence instead of like what we pre... What we're supposed to yeah. be programmed to do. Yeah, or like yeah. assuming that like if I just saw you, oh, she's got to be crazy because she has tattoos. Yeah. And like you're like the sweetest person we vibe, <laughs> you know? Like, I was never really off of physical things. For me, it was always, like, I had a lot of sexual closeness. Mm -hmm. Closeness. Like, I was was cool, but, like, I don't care if you go do that, but I didn't want to do certain things. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to be with women. And Mm -hmm. it's like, I still really don't, but I can enjoy them now. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, I can still have a good time with... And I just love the fact that, like, doing this podcast has gotten me to that point where, like, I've been able to, like... And that's great. Open the fuck up and, like... Expanding your mind and expanding It's so much more fun now. Like, before it was just, like, this battle of, like, trying to see... It was almost like you were in competition with the person you were having sex with at some point. Oh, yeah. And I feel like that's a huge thing in the industry, too. Competition. This is not a competition. Everybody, we all have something to offer. I just have to make that a PSA because I feel like I've lost a lot of friends in this fucking community because of that. Like, everybody thinks it's a competition. can all win. Yeah, when they see you winning, they get jealous. I'm like, baby, you could be up here with me. Like, you can. Like, I don't want to be up here alone. I want everybody at my table, too. But some people just can't handle that stuff. Yeah. Can't focus on their own table or try to get up there. They just want to be mad that yeah. they're not there yet with That's you. That's why uh, there can only be a few at the top. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's the highest structure. Yes. There's only going to be a few up there, man. It's got to be heavy at the bottom. I had to figure that out. So, Man, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, We're going to go play. Wait, what are we, where, did the food come? No, How much time we got? Like 10 minutes. Oh, perfect timing. Great. We can take a little break. <laughs> We're going to do a little tits out, take out. Yes. Um, we haven't done that in a while. We're gonna get some. We got some hibachi coming. Yes, yeah. It'd be good. Okay, wait. I need one good flogging. One good flogging. To flog me. Okay. okay. Or actually, do do a do a little. Would you mind doing me a little like a little baby? I'm a little I'm a baby. I'm a baby sub. Okay, so be nice. But I'm gonna let you do something. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll listen. I'll be a good girl. It's like you just gotta bend over this way. Bend over here. Yes. Bend over that way. I'll be, I'll just tell me what you need me to do. I don't want to hit you hard because this one does hurt. So. Okay. It's just a little. Yeah. And this one has more weight on it. I don't know if you yeah. feel it. Like it, it makes more of a thump versus like a sting. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I love this guy. Yes. Shake that booty. Yes. 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 I love I'll shake it. mine with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll twerk while you're twerking while I'm vlogging you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Shit. You. Make sure. Okay. So you have OnlyFans, right? Yes. OnlyFans. It's nylon underscore dolly. Nylon Dolly. Okay, and then yes. is is there anywhere else like if people wanted to like get in contact with you or anything like that? Um, I have. Close. Let's see. I do. Don't come with the bullshit. Come don't. ready. Yeah, don't with, come with any of that you shit. Need to have what you need ready. Kay? Yes, I do have OnlyFans. I do porn and stuff, so I'm on many vids under Nylon Dolly as well. Um, if you want to get a hold of me and book me or like anything email only don't fucking come into my socials ask me for shit email mistress dolly 666 at yahoo.com perfect yes. awesome so you guys check her out make sure you guys see her and make sure you guys check over the patreon because and then yes usually in a day or two after we post this episode okay. the patreon will get posted we'll get a little tits out take out where we yes. do asmr food reviews Ooh. and we are going to get some hibachi and get that cracking so. i'm excited i'm excited yes, too yes. let's go Woo. see y'all next week <laughs>